Welcome to our online streaming video service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church and St. John's Lutheran Church in Central City and Palmer, respectively. It's a pleasure to have you join us, uh, even if it's over the internet, while we uh, work through the self-quarantine period of the COVID-19 virus. We're pleased to be able to use the technology to share the services with you. Quick word about our services before we begin this morning. Um, first and foremost, if you would like to follow along with our services, you will find a link in the description down below. And in that link, there is a downloadable PDF document that has our entire order of worship for this morning so that you can follow along with the hymns also included in there. In addition to this, because we're doing this service for two churches, I have the bulletins, the normal weekly bulletins for both of those churches also linked as PDF documents down below in the description. As we proceed through our service, obviously we're not gonna be celebrating the sacrament together, so a quick word on the sacrament. If you uh, would desire to receive the Lord's Supper, um, I would invite you to call me here at the church and uh, make an appointment, and I'd be happy to share the Lord's Supper with you as a private communion service, both here or if you're in Palmer, you can do that on Thursdays when I'm there for office hours. Um, also, during the offering portion of our service today, uh, since we won't be collecting an offering, um, I will encourage you at both churches to remember that uh, both churches continue to function, and um, it would be good if you could continue to uh, bring your offerings into church. Um, you can either do that delivering them by hand, you can mail them into the church, uh, or if you would like, you can call the church and we'd be happy to share with you routing numbers to our checking accounts so that you can do electronic funds transfer. We will be using Divine Service Setting 3 this morning. And um, with each of our hymns, uh, as we proceed through our service today, the other thing we'll do for the sake of time on our tape is um, we will just play one verse of the hymn. So if you'd like to follow along, read and meditate the hymn um, while it's playing, you're welcome to do that. Or if you'd like to sing it verse by verse, um, all I would say is just back and, and rewind it on the uh, video and you can play it back. With that, we will begin with our opening hymn, number 537, Beautiful Savior. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues with the words of this morning's intro. It Those are printed for you in your worship folder. We speak these words responsively. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. 
He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. We omit the glory and excelsis for the season of Lent and continue with the salutation and the collect of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite you once again to follow along with the readings in our worship folder provided for you in the link in our description. The Old Testament reading appointed for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, comes from Isaiah chapter 42. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste on mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased, for his righteousness' sake, to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsively the words of today's gradual. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This morning's epistle lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 5. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are in light, you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We omit the Alleluia and verse for the season of Lent. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how are your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know from where he comes. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now have the opportunity to confess our faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Those are printed for you in your worship bulletin. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto all from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning's text comes from the Gospel lesson you heard read just a moment ago from John, the ninth chapter. What on earth is going on? How could all of this have happened? How have we moved from everything being seemingly normal and good the problems of the world were the world's problems, meaning they were somewhere else, not here, in and amongst us. But how did this happen? This problem became ours. To this COVID-19 coronavirus business. Social distancing, toilet paper hoarding, shuttering our doors. These were always someone else's problems, but now... <laughs> They've even come to rural Nebraska. They're our problems. Case in point, I'm preaching to basically an empty church right here. Suzanne is here with me behind the camera, but folks, I can assure you, she's at least six feet away from me, so our social distancing is meeting government-required standards. Is all of this some part of a larger conspiracy? Who's pulling all the strings on something like this? Is it the Illuminati? Could this be the work of people that want this party or that party elected? Or is this a means of the government keeping us from word and sacrament, some kind of way for them to exercise control over the church? If you listen to social media for your information, these are the kinds of things I've heard people say, even people here and among us saying. They've seen these things and they've speculated on these things, but I would wholeheartedly reject these things mostly on the basis of the fact that I don't think there's people smart enough to pull off something quite like this that we're experiencing right now. Nothing this sophisticated, at least. And yet there is someone who is smart enough to do something like this. Maybe this scourge is bigger than people are speculating, being something that's run by people of this world. Maybe the issue that we're dealing with is a curse leveled by God himself. Perhaps it's the kind of apocalyptic judgment against creation promised in Genesis 3 and foretold about in the end of times in Revelation 6, verses 7 and 8, with a pale horse rider named Death with authority over the fourth of the earth to kill with famine and pestilence and the wild beasts of the earth. 
After all, didn't they say when the coronavirus began after eating some strange animal meat in a market in Wuhan, China, that that's when this whole thing started? So famine and pestilence and wild beasts of the earth, it all seems to fit, doesn't it? Could we be experiencing this direct scourge from God's hand himself? What possibly could we have done to deserve this from God if he's the one who's behind it all? This isn't just a question for all of us gathered around our computer screens and smart TVs during self-quarantine while we watch pastor's pre-recorded sermon. This, brothers and sisters in Christ, was something like the question that was posed to Christ himself in our gospel reading today. Who sinned was the question this man or his parents, that he was born blind. And with that question, the disciples of Jesus wondered aloud, just like well-meaning Christians of our own day, a day of self-quarantine, wondering to ourselves, what have we done? Have we sinned to deserve the fate that we're experiencing now? Realistically speaking, the disciples weren't all that far off. The facts are the facts. Genesis 3 and Revelation 6, notwithstanding, we know from the very word of God that we have earned for ourselves by our sin a well-deserved punishment for our disobedience to God. We know that we've earned for ourselves in light of the beginning of the 40-day journey of Lent when we celebrated Ash Wednesday together that dust we are and to dust we shall return. God's Word teaches us that the wages of sin is death. And so clearly any punishment that we experience, any injustice like the blindness this man experienced in our text today, or even what we're going through right now, we've got it because we deserve it. We've earned it. That man got it because of his sin. We have what we have because of our sin by this logic a worldwide pandemic, a killer virus that we have no way to stop or cure that's airborne, that's more than just washing your hands. Well, we must have earned it. We deserve it. Why? Because we're sinners. That's why. And folks, that's true. Every word of it is true. What the disciples said in their day, what we say in our day, it's all true. We Collective humanity together deserve God's wrath and punishment on account of our sinful lives. Living in darkness, if you will. For as the Word of God teaches in James 2.10, whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. We're guilty of breaking all of God's law. And who among us hasn't failed at even just one single point of God's holy and righteous law. Look around at what's going on in light of the coronavirus right now. Who amongst us hasn't bought that extra package of toilet paper because, well, you needed it? My dad posted a funny the other day on the internet. He said, if there were 30 rolls of toilet paper in a Costco pack, and there's 425 sheets per roll, I said, sheets, I mean squares, people, that means there's 1,000, or excuse me, 12,750 sheets or squares per package. If you, in a typical visit to the restroom, use 20 sheets per sheet, I mean per usage, that means that you have 637 and a half usages, we'll call it instead of sheets, usages per case. 637 usages per case. In the middle of a 14-day quarantine, this is the equivalent of 45 and a half usages in the bathroom per day. So if a person grabs four cases of toilet paper, as we've seen people doing, <laughs> doing on the news, that family of four would have to go number two exactly 182 times per day in order to use all the toilet paper that they've hoarded. 
Folks, I've seen literally videotaped fights between people in the store that have been posted on the internet these past few days, fighting over giving up even one of their four or five hoarded toilet paper cases. It's funny. It is funny to watch, but it's also sad at the same time. It's maybe a not-so-funny reflection on our times. The kind of selfishness and me-first thinking that we experience seems to be all around us in times of panic and fear like this. And when we neglect to consider the needs of our neighbors, well, we're guilty of breaking just one of God's laws. But if we've broken one of God's laws, we see that the Word of God teaches us that we've broken all of God's laws. And because you've done this to the least of one of my brothers, Jesus taught, you've done it to me. And if you've done it to him, then you deserve from him all kinds of wrath and punishment. And I'm not just talking about a funny toilet paper example. How many of us haven't thought about all the unknowns that we're encircled with that won't affect us? Just thinking about ourselves first is a sign of our guilt. Not thinking of one another first. Caring for our neighbor's needs. Of course, Jesus' disciples would think about who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Jesus knew that sin deserves punishment, it was evident in his response to the disciples. He said, It was not this man who sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Why was this man blind? Why do we suffer with a so far not curable virus? Why is there difficulty in the world around us? Why is there death? How many deaths attributable just to this virus alone? Of course it's because of sin. But to think of it this way is to miss the bigger picture for the forest for the sake of seeing just one of the trees within the forest. Jesus wants us, his disciples, you, his disciples, to see the bigger picture. Of course this man was suffering the inescapable punishment of sin and its collateral damage upon humanity. And yes, we're still suffering, even down to our day currently, from the inescapable punishment of sin and all of its collateral damage. But Jesus wants us to see the bigger picture. This man in our gospel reading today was born blind, but he was born under the all-seeing eyes of God in order that what was about to happen could have its proper impact. Without recapping all of the details in the long reading about the spit and the mud and washing in a pool named Siloam, which means scent, and all of the subsequent interchanges between Pharisees and the formerly blind man and his parents, what we can definitively say, according to this text, is that the man had his sight restored. And in verses 32 and 33, the formerly blind man says this, Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. But folks, don't you see? Jesus didn't do nothing. Jesus healed the man. Jesus restored the man's sight. And according to this formerly blind man's words, that means Jesus is from God, sent by God, Siloam, the same name in which the pool that the formerly blind man would wash and regain his sight, Siloam, means sent, sent by God, and this is what Jesus is, sent by God to do God's will to rescue and redeem a world that's blind to its own sin and its need for a Savior. A world that, according to our epistle lesson today, walks in darkness. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. See, we have this Savior, Jesus Christ. We live in a world that, apart from Jesus, who had been sent to it, would have only one outcome awaiting it, and that would be death, which is, ironically, what the sent one was sent to do. 
He was sent to die. To die in your place. To die in the place of sinful generations like the one that we read about, but also not unlike our own. Jesus was sent to bear in himself the burden of this world's sin. Dying on the cross and undeserved death that he faced, but doing it anyway so that all of us who deserve death, eternal death and separation and all of the collateral damage, so that we wouldn't experience it eternally. Just like a man born blind who was healed by Jesus, experienced restoration, so also Jesus, though he died, experienced a restoration of life. Raised from the dead, his resurrection from the grave on Easter morning becomes the only hope for all creation. Now, no longer quarantined to a life of blindness, the man in our gospel reading today gives witness. He gives witness to the one responsible for his restoration. And it's a great example for what you and I do in difficult times such as the ones we're living in right now. We who are quarantined today by a virus, we can do just as well as this blind man did, and we're doing so. Our true quarantine on account of our sins would have us separated from God for eternity, but now in Christ Jesus, fully restored, raised from the dead on account of our baptisms into Christ, we are now no longer captive to any old fears that the world can send our way. We're free. We're free. Just as our introit spoke about today in our reading, I share it with you again. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing that I have asked the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. What do we do in times of trouble? We remember that we have been restored by the one who was sent by God. What do you do in times like these? You remember it too. And you bring light to the eyes of people who are living in a darkened world. You share the same message with them. We above all people are to be blessed. In Christ, we can live in full confidence from wherever we are. Thanks be to God for the one who has restored us, even Christ Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds and faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We sing the offertory. Again, we encourage you to find a way to deliver your offerings and tithes to the church in a way that works best for you. We continue with the prayers of the church. We pray. In the darkness of sin and its death, we cry to you, O Lord. Open our ears to your word, our minds by your spirit, and our hearts by your grace, that we may know and be thankful for all the blessings you have given to us in Christ our Lord especially the gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation. 
Strengthen us in faith that we would serve you with all of our body, mind, soul, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bidden by your word, we pray you, O Lord, on behalf of your church and all your people in every place. Give to us good pastors and servants of your word who will preach the full counsel of your word and serve us with your sacraments. Raise up many more to serve as church workers and bless those who are now preparing for full-time church work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Defended by your grace, we ask you, O Lord, to provide us with good and faithful leaders who will honor the cause of justice in our land, preserve the precious gift of liberty, and protect the lives of those least able to defend themselves. Bless the members of our armed forces and protect them as they defend us, and grant your blessing to all emergency workers who come to our aid in times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enjoying the riches of your grace, we ask you, O Lord, to give to each of us generous hearts that we may share with the poor what you have provided and work for the common good of all. Be with those who are unemployed and in search of honest labor, the underemployed in pursuit of better jobs, and the homeless seeking basic shelter for themselves and those in their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing your healing will and gifts, we pray you, O Lord, to remember the sick in their afflictions, to calm those who are troubled in mind, and to keep steadfast the dying. Be with those who are listed in our prayer list today. Show us your gracious will, O Lord, and sustain those who are afflicted in body or mind until that day when you bestow on us new bodies fit for the eternal life that you have prepared for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mindful of your promise, we ask you, O Lord, to comfort all who grieve and build up those who mourn with the hope of resurrection. Remembering the faithful who have died in Christ, we pray you to bring us at last to be with them in your nearer presence, looking forward to that day when we shall join in the marriage supper of the Lamb in his kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, asking you to grant our prayers, not for our sake, but for the sake of him alone. Teach our hearts to be content with your will and to trust that you will answer us with what is best for us and at the right time for our need. So do we pray, giving testimony of our confidence in your gracious favor in Christ by answering with one voice, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer, comfort all that mourn, sustain all medical personnel in their labors, and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the salutation and benedicamus. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We sing our closing hymn.
Once again, thank you for joining us and a quick word of encouragement that you're certainly also welcome to join us not only for worship services on Sunday, but also our Wednesday evening services, which will be posted on our YouTube channel. We're also making an effort to post up our Sunday morning adult Bible class, which we've been studying 2 Samuel in, and I'll make also an effort to uh, post up our normally scheduled Tuesday morning men's Bible study as we continue in the book of 1 Corinthians. The Lord be with you. Amen.